Hello, and welcome to exercise one on page 18 of the workbook. Um, so in the exercise that we that we work on today, we're going to be you're going to give us a chance just to kind of get the feel of these definitions of, of spans, linear combinations and how we do calculations with them. Okay, so let's read part one and see what they're asking us to do here. They'd like us to determine whether the vector negative two zero three is a linear combination of the vectors one three zero and two four negative one. Okay, so let's start with what that means. Okay, that's like asking us, can we take the vector negative two zero three and build it as a linear combination of the other two vectors? And by building it, we mean, can we come up with coefficients? So that this sum, a times 1, 3, 0 plus b times 2, 4, negative 1, adds up to give us the negative 2, 0, 3. So the question that we're asking is, do such an a and a b exist? Okay, can we figure out what a and b would have to be so that that's a true statement? Or are there, is there maybe no such a and b that makes that work? Okay, well, this kind of becomes an algebra problem. Let's simplify the right-hand side. So if we take everything and add it together on the right-hand side, we're going to get a plus 2b in the first coordinate, and then 3a plus 4b in the second coordinate. Okay, and then finally, let's see, a times 0 plus b times negative 1, that's going to be a negative b. Again, all we're doing is multiplying the a and the b through and then adding everything up. Okay, and what that means then is that for this statement to be true, we need all of the coordinates to be true. So the first thing that has to be true is that negative 2 has to equal a plus 2b. Let's write that first equation down. Okay, so a plus 2b has to equal negative 2. And then the same thing has to be true for the other two coordinates. So 0 has to equal 3a plus 4b. Okay, and then finally, very last equation, uh, negative b has to equal 3. Okay, and so what it comes down to is, can we solve that system for a and b, or is there no solution? Okay, now you could probably solve this system just using some form of trial and error, but some of the systems that we look at in this course are going to be large enough to where that might not be so practical to kind of use a sort of seat of your pants trial and error method. So I'd like to remind you of the process, kind of the general process that you can use to solve a system of equation using matrices. That's going to be a useful technique in our course. Okay, so what we can do is to take this system and write it as an augmented matrix. So starting with the a plus 2b, just focus on the coefficients. You're going to get a 1 and a 2. And then the right-hand side of the equation is a negative 2. Okay, then moving on to the second equation, 3a plus 4b equals 0. Focusing on the coefficients, we're going to get a 3, a 4, and a 0. Okay, and then finally, we have no a's on the left-hand side of the last one, a negative 1, and then a 3. Okay, we're going to use the process called Gaussian elimination to take this system in matrix form and to reduce it into what's known as an echelon form. Okay, now hopefully you remember these terms maybe from a previous linear algebra course like 241. We'll, we'll review them here though. So I'm going to start by focusing on the first row. Okay, that one that I'm circling is what's called a pivot position. And what we'd like to do is to get zeros everywhere below that. Okay, so we've already got a zero here, but we'd like to get a zero in place of the three that's sitting there. So we want to ask ourselves, what row operation could we do to make that happen? Well, what we could do is take negative 3r1 and add it to r2. So negative 3 times the first row plus the second row would be a way of knocking out the zero. Okay, and maybe just to help you visualize that, I'm going to sneak in right above the first row. What would happen if you multiplied it through by negative 3? So 1 would be negative 3. 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6. And then negative 2 times negative 3 would be 6. Okay, and if you take those green numbers and just add them to the numbers in the second row, you would get 0 in the first position. That's what we wanted. Then negative 6 plus 4 would be negative 2. 
Okay, and then finally, six plus zero would be six. Okay, and there's what happens when we take negative three times the first row plus the second row, and we'll leave the other two rows the same. Okay, so first row is still one, two, negative two. Last row is still zero, negative one, and three. Okay, and then um, I'm gonna do what's called a row switch. Okay, just as notice that there's a there's a negative one here and a negative two here. I'd kind of like the negative one to be above the negative two, just because it's gonna make the algebra easier. Okay, so we'll do a row swap here. Zero, negative one, three, and zero, negative two, six. Okay, we are done with the first row. And looking at the second row, here's our next pivot position. And we'd like to get zeros below that pivot position. Okay, and the question is, what row operation could we do to make that happen? Okay, well, notice that if we take negative 2 times r2, the second row, and add it to r3, we're going to knock out the negative 2 that's sitting in that position. Okay, let's, let's do that and just confirm it. So first row is going to stay the same. Second row is going to stay the same. And then the third row, okay, we are taking negative 2 times, let's do it one entry at a time. So negative 2 times 0 plus 0, that's just going to give us 0. Nothing changes. And then um, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 plus negative 2 is going to give us another 0. That's what we wanted. And then finally, negative 2 times 3 plus 6 is going to give us negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay. And so there's our reduced system. And that's what we call echelon form because it kind of has this stair step pattern. We've got zeros here, zeros here. If we circle our two, actually, let me get rid of that. Okay, back up just a second. I don't want to clutter our diagram up too much here. Okay, what I'd really like to focus on are the two pivot positions here and here. And notice that there are zeros below those. That's what we want. That's what we mean by echelon form. And when your matrix is in echelon form, what it usually means is that it's very easy to solve your system. Okay, let's see if we can confirm that. So if we start with the second equation and focus on the coefficients, it looks like... 0a minus b equals 3, or it would be easier just to write negative b equals 3. And notice that just multiply by most, both sides by a negative 1, and we get b equals negative 3. Okay, and then moving up to the first equation, if we read that off, it looks like a plus 2b equals negative 2. And now that we know what b is, we can substitute that in. So we get a plus 2 times negative 3 equals negative 2. And if you solve that for a, let's see, what do we get here? Um, a is equal to negative 2 plus 6, which is just going to be 4. Okay, so we were able to find a value for a and a value for b, and that tells us that the answer to this question that we posed up here is yes. Okay, we can indeed build negative 2, 0, 3 as a linear combination. And so our answer is yes. Okay, and I'll go ahead and just write out the equation that we started with. Okay, starting here and fill in the values of a and b that we just found. So a was 4 okay, times that first vector and b was negative 3. Okay, we have just written the vector negative 2, 0, 3 as a linear combination of 1, 3, 0, and 2, 4, negative 1.